Field Note, Episode 23, White-tailed Deer Photography for Beginners, featuring the Panasonic Lumix G9 and the Panasonic Leica 100-400mm lens. 2020 and 2021 have been difficult years for a lot of people. I don't think there's much I could say that hasn't been said, but I hope that if, you're, if you've had hard times or that if you're going through difficult times, that things will get better in the near future. This period has been a challenging time to be a wildlife photographer because of all the restrictions. Many of my well-laid photo hiking plans were canceled because of the pandemic. Throughout this period, even though the challenges were numerous, I made a constant effort to go out in nature and shoot whatever I could while respecting the restrictions. In this spirit, I decided to challenge myself to shoot a video on white-tailed deer photography while staying within a 10 kilometer radius of my home. I'm no expert, but I would like to share my top tips to help those that could be struggling to get their first photos of white-tailed deer. Why white-tailed deer, you may ask? Because the white-tailed deer is the most widely distributed of North America's large mammals. It can be found as far as far south as the southern tip of North America and as far north as the Great Slave Lakes in Northwest Territories of Canada. It also spreads from east, from the east coast to the west coast of North America. All this is very nice, but what if you don't have any white-tailed deers in your area? Well, maybe you should stick around because a fair number of my tips can be used for other ungulates or wildlife in general. Even though most of what I'll be covering is exportable to other regions, my experience is largely based on observations gathered in the southern portions of Canada and in the northern and western parts of the United States of America, so your mileage may vary. Wildlife photography is a privilege. When doing any kind of wildlife photography, it's important that you act in an eco-responsible and ethical way. Do not harass or chase after deers. Keep a safe distance that is respectful of their needs. The life of a deer is a difficult one. Predators are numerous for fawns and for adults. Among mule deer, research has shown that up to two-thirds of the fawn don't live to be a year old. Winters can be harsh and cold in some areas. Nutritious foods are rare and deer have to live off their fat reserves. This photo shows a very skinny male deer in early spring after a rather normal winter. Look at how thin the neck area is and how noticeable the ribs are. So please help to protect wildlife so that generations to come can enjoy taking photos of them. Also, if you come across a fawn unattended, lying motionless on the ground, resist the temptation to touch it or to take it to a wildlife refuge. It's most likely not abandoned. It's perfectly natural for a doe to leave her fawn unattended for hours at a time. The fawn has very little scent and his spotted coat provides a natural camouflage which keeps it safe from predators. The doe will return a few times a day to feed the fawn. This goes on until the fawn is strong enough to follow the doe. In wildlife photography, the difficulties are twofold. There are the technical aspects and finding the subjects. A word on gear. A good camera with at least a 300 mm full frame equivalent lens is a must. A longer fo a focal length, 400 to 600 or more, would be pre preferable as it allows getting better images with less cropping while remaining further away from the subject and thus disturbing them less. Don't obsess over the gear though. Find what works for you and go spend time in nature looking for deer. Binoculars make spotting deer in the field or forest less arduous. In a wooded area, when deers are immobile, they can be remarkably hard to spot. For winter, in latitudes where icy conditions on trails are a problem, I would recommend over-the-boot traction aid like the micro spikes shown here. For spring and summer, don't forget good bug protection. Gear is important, but knowing your subject is even more important. Researching the topic is not only fun, but it gives you valuable information for finding a deer in the field. Full-grown uh, white-tailed deer males often measure 1 meter at the shoulder and weigh 110 kilograms or more. Females are smaller and on average weigh 75 kilograms. 
As the name implies, white-tailed deer have a white tail that can be noticed when the deer is in an alert position. They also have white around the nose, the mouth, and the eyes. Those in fawn usually stay together for about a year, sometimes two. For most of the year, bucks and does stay in separate groups, but during the winter, in areas with significant amount of snow, larger groups of deer gather together in deer yards, which are often in areas with good concentrations of conifers. The trees reduce the amount of snow on the ground, and the concentration helps to keep winter trails cleared and offers protection from predators. The diet consists mostly of green plants, nuts, and in winter, of wood vegetation. When is the best time to look for them? The air can be active at any time, but typically they are more active at dawn, dusk, or at night. Deer adjust their level of activity based on the environment, the weather, the temperature, and the season. They are less active in high summer temperatures, heavy snow, or heavy rain. You can see them during the day, but if you're out in the open on a bright sunny day, it doesn't make for the best photos because of the dark shadows. So the best time would be generally at dawn or dusk. Contrary to popular belief, you don't necessarily have to go deep in the woods to find deer. I live in an urban area with a population of 1.2 million people. This does present some challenges for wildlife photography, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. As a matter of fact, almost all of the photos and footage you'll be seeing were shot in the, the second part of 2020 or the first part of 2021 within the radius of 10 kilometers from my house. The advantage of starting in an urban area is that in the larger urban green spaces, deer are generally more used to the presence of humans, like runners, families with kids, day hikers, and are not as easily scared the way. This does not mean that you don't need to act in an ethical or eco-responsible way. Signs that indicate that deer are present in an area. This one may seem a little strange, but if a road sign warning of deer has been installed along a stretch of road, there's a reasonable chance that you could see deer in this area. Road signs aren't cheap and installing them isn't either. Now I'm not suggesting you should try and photograph deer on a busy road, but if there's a public land near where the road signs are, that could be a good place to start looking for them. If the land is privately owned, never trespass and always ask for permission before entering. Also, before venturing out to look for deer, inform yourself regarding the hunting seasons and regulations in your area. During hunting season, only go to areas where hunting isn't allowed. And even so, use extra caution as the limits of hunting zones are not always clearly marked. Game trails are also a good sign of the presence of animals in an area. Deer, like other animals, like to take advantage of existing trail networks to get around. How can you tell if a trail is used by deers? Well, you could use a trail cam. If you don't have one, one of the best signs is seeing deer tracks. Deer tracks are usually 5 to 8 centimeters, 2 to 3 inches, and when the, there's steeper snow, you can see traces left by the dew claws. Droppings are a good sign of deer activity in an area. They are typically pointed pellets in winter and pie-shaped in summer. Once you've found a good area for deer photography, one very interesting approach could be to install a blind. As always, do get permission of the landowner before. Deer can be spooked by moving cars, but if you sit quietly in a parked vehicle in a safe area, you can sometimes use your car as a blind. These are some of my favorite tips. I'm no expert, but I hope they can help you along the fascinating journey of deer photography. None of those tips will guarantee that you will find a deer, let alone get a good photo. So be patient and be persistent. If you have some other good tips for finding deers in the wild, 
please share them in the comments section below. If you enjoy this kind of content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay safe.